everyone for tuning in to Fully Booked Chats. This afternoon, we will chat with New York Times bestselling author Jennifer Nevin. Um, so Jennifer is a New York Times bestselling author of All the Bright Places and Holding Up the Universe, as well as the popular Velvet Jean series. She is also the author of several nonfiction books, including Ada Blackjack, The Aquanet Diaries, and The Ice Master, which was named a top nonfiction book by Entertainment Weekly. Her new, her new York Times bestselling All the Bright Places is now a major motion picture starring Al Fanning and Justice Smith. And although she grew up in Indiana, she now lives with her fiance and literary cats in Los Angeles, which remains her favorite place to wonder. Everyone, let's all welcome Jennifer Niven. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, thank you so much. Thanks so much for being with us. Um, it's really great to have you at Fully Book Chats, here at Fully Book Chats, um, to talk about your new book, Breathless, and of course, everything about being a writer and all that jazz. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful to be here. I just can't, appre- I mean, really, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It would have been better in person, but this is what we've got now. So we're still grateful. <laughs> exactly. Me too. I know. I wish I could be there in person, but this is the mm-hmm. next best thing. Exactly. So <laughs> first of all, we just wanted to check in. How are you? How are you holding up um, during these weird, weird times? <laughs> Thank you for asking. I'm um, you know, doing well, thankfully. Um, everyone I know and love is safe and healthy, mm-hmm. and I'm That's very grateful for that. And I hope that you're doing well also. You know, it's such a crazy time. I know. We're holding up pretty okay here, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's talk about your new book, Breathless. Can you tell us how the story came to be? Did you have it planned out or did it just kind of unfold along the way? It's yeah. a great question. Um, so the new story, it's about this 18-year-old girl who finds out just before high school graduation that her parents are separating. Mm-hmm. And she feels mm-hmm. like her world just changes in an instant. And which I think we can all relate to this year a little bit. (laughs) Um, And so, and she and her mother end up um, moving away that summer to an island off the coast of Georgia, which is very remote. And Claude, the girl, just feels like she's cut off from everyone and everything. And um, so she really has to start over. And for me, the inspiration for this story came from actually when I was 18, Um, the same thing happened to me um, when my parents split up and I was taken away from like everyone I knew and my home and had to kind of start over and really figure out who I was and who I wanted to be. So I knew I always kind of wanted to write about that time period in my life, Um, but it was really personal and not the most fun summer to revisit in some ways. But I decided (laughs) after writing All the Bright Places, it really showed me that I could write a personal story um, and open myself up on the page. So I decided to try that again with Breathless. All right. That's that's really, um, that's a touching moment to know about because I think I read somewhere that writing, that Breathless is a lot more personal to you than the other, your previous books. And um, it's interesting to know that it was actually a part of your life in that sense. Yes. Definitely. So, um, yeah. So Claude's mom, Lauren, mentioned something about a defining moment in tragedies, how when life suddenly changes like now and like what happened with Claude, we are defined by how we pick up the pieces. And obviously the turning point in Claude's life is finding out that her parents are separating. How did you decide on um, how Claude would deal with this defining moment of hers? Mm, I love this question. Mm-hmm. You know, I think... I mean, so much of life is defining moments. And especially, you know, one thing that I really love about writing for young people is that especially like teen years are such like years of first, like first things happen, whether they're good or bad. And there's so many defining moments that help shape us and turn us into who we are and who we become. And so I think with Claude and this, I just... I wanted her to realize, just like I want all my readers to realize when they're going through something really hard and unexpected as life gives them, gives us so many times 
that you are stronger than you know, and that you are able to like, if the floor is pulled out from under you, you can rebuild that floor or just build a new one. And you can do it, you know, out of your own strength. And um, you can also do it with the help of others. And it's important to, to do both. So that's, that's kind of where that came from. And I wanted her to pick up the pieces in a way that I don't think I was quite able to that summer <laughs> myself. I wanted her to be able to do it faster and like more empowered and in a way give myself now the book I wish I had had then. That's amazing. Um, That's also one of the reasons why I personally love young adult stories because it's almost always about like a coming of age, coming of um, like a self-discovery kind of story. And no matter what age you are, it's always something that you can look back to and reflect on because it's something that you went through, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So one of the many fascinating ways we get to know Claude, and I was super interested in this, um, is through this kind of dissonance in how she perceives news. There's always a a recurrence of what I hear versus what they actually say. And it kind of invites us to see what's really in her mind first before we draw our own conclusions. Um, why did you choose to kind of tell her story this way? I think I, ch- I chose to give Claude that kind of experience of what I think I hear and what is actually said, because I feel like, at least I know for me, I feel like that happens to me a lot, especially if I'm in an emotional conversation. Yeah. I feel like it's so easy if someone is telling you how they feel about something or they're upset with you, it's so easy to hear and I will never love you again, or you have disappointed me forever. And you know, all of those things. And I think that so many young people um, are going through so much stress and anxiety. And I feel like they carry the weight of the world on their shoulders, Mm -hmm. especially right now, especially in this year. And So I feel like that's something we can all relate to in that way. And it's just a way to remind ourselves, okay, sometimes what we hear is not actually what's being said. And I always have an emotional reaction first. And then I think about it when I'm, you know, can ingest it more and kind of like, okay, like think more calmly and coolly. And that's something that that Claude definitely like yeah. obviously was going through as well. <laughs> it was re- very relatable because I also um, kind of saw myself, I think it's the first time that I, I read about a character acknowledging both sides because sometimes it's just the narration or like other times it's just the character's feelings. But then now we kind of see an overview of everything. And so <laughs> I guess it's kind of, it helps with the, um, self-awareness especially when we are doing it like yes. it's kind of like it kind of triggers you when it happens in real life oh wait a minute maybe I should take a step back <laughs> it's so true yeah okay <laughs> so um another um aspect of the story is um how we explore our body and our sexuality and it's a really big part of growing up that we need to talk about And the portrayal of Claude's journey, this particular journey from her conversations with her friends to eventually sleeping with Maya and everything in between, it's refreshingly candid and honest. And um, we just wanted to know how did you go about writing Claude's experiences and emotions and realizations about sex throughout the book and throughout the story? Thank you. Oh my gosh. I, you know, it was just as when I was writing All the Bright Places and I was writing about these issues that are affecting teens with Mm -hmm. um, mental illness, mental health, suicide, depression, loss, I felt this enormous responsibility Mm -hmm. to write it as honestly as possible and as responsibly as possible. And I certainly felt the same way with Breathless, with writing about sexuality, especially for young women, since Claude is a young woman and she's Um, you know, she's going through so much that she feels like she has no control over during that summer. And the thing that she realizes she does have control over is her body and her choices. And part of that is deciding to have sex 
with Mm -hmm. this boy who she meets and eventually falls for. And I just wanted her to come at it from a very empowered place. I wanted her to own her body, own her choices and own those decisions because I feel like so much of the time and it's necessary, we see in YA, um, Mm -hmm. you know, really sad or unfortunate or scary, violent, you know, things having to do with sex. And I wanted to present another aspect of it. Um, And also, you know, just hopefully to encourage um, young people to feel more empowered in their choices and the choices they make, because I think that's really important. And not a lot of people are talking about that. Right. Yeah, that's that's a sad kind of reality that we live in. But I do get what you say about how Claude was empowered. That's what's refreshing about me because she was very, um, she was firm in her choices and she knows that these are decisions that she's making. But Mm -hmm. it doesn't take away from her fear, from her apprehensions. You still kind of see all the emotions, but she just, she owns it, as she said. So she just goes through everything. And that's, I I think that's what's refreshing. That's what I found refreshing throughout the story. I love the way you just said that it's beautifully said (laughs) well it's your story it's just thank you for imparting that with us (laughs) of course (laughs) yeah um another favorite thing of mine with uh with the story is the island um i love when when characters when stories take you to places that you could never imagine or you could never really think about visit in real life and the island in this story is more than a backdrop um, it feels like a character in itself, especially since its history is entwined with Claude's. Um, is it based on a real place? Is it actually an island off the coast of Georgia? And what was your research process like for building this, this little world that they, they're in? Oh, I love this. I, I really, I do believe that I, I feel like, as you're saying, that the um, setting of it, the island itself is a character in the story. And for me, I wanted a place where Claude could go that would feel very remote, that would feel like an island because she feels like an island um, mm-hmm. in the story for so much of it. And so there, there is actually, there are two islands off the coast of Georgia that inspired this island. And it's kind of a hybrid of the two. So there's an island called Sapelo Island and one called Cumberland Island. And um, they're beautiful places. I had been to Cumberland years before and always remembered it because like wild horses run on the beaches and there are alligators and there are these beautiful trees like dripping with Spanish moss and palm trees. And and there are no vehicles on the island. There are no paved roads, no stores, nothing. There's one inn to stay in and like dirt roads. And (laughs) so it is based on these two real places. And the, you know, having gone there years before it haunted me and stuck with me. And and so I kept going back to that setting and I was like, this is where I have to set it. And in terms of researching, I, I went to the island. I had done a lot of prep work. I'd created my characters and story. And then I went to the island because I was really having a hard time getting started in the actual writing on the page. And mm-hmm. while I was there, I met my now husband. And oh, wow. <laughs> we had all of these adventures that Claude and Maya have in the book. So like that first day we met, we like knew that we were meant to be together and we had all these adventures and I went back to the end and I wrote them all down (laughs) and that was the start of the book because I started putting all the adventures that we had into the story and it really cute. (laughs) them. that's so cute I loved all of their adventures and now that I know that it's inspired by actual adventures that's just amazing (laughs) thank you And it's cool. Um, it's kind of like what Maya says when um, the island gives you what you need when you need it. It's it's those experiences I think that the island provides that you couldn't get anywhere else. You know, I think that's so true, and it and it really is true. And that's something that um, my husband Justin was living on the island at the time, and that's mm-hmm. something that he had said to me, and other people who had stayed there or worked there had said as well. And it, and it really is true. You kind of go yes. not thinking you need anything from it and yeah. it ends up giving you exactly what you need. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, Thank you. So since the island is off the coast of Georgia and there's practically no self, self, 
cell service there, Claude is pretty much cut off from her past life. Like you said, a while ago, there's this isolation in it. Can you talk about how this kind of disconnection and isolation helped Claude heal in a way and how being in a new environment, especially one surrounded by nature, kind of helped her in her healing journey as well? Absolutely. I think that, you know, one thing that it did for her um, is that it, it made her kind of look inward in a way that she mm-hmm. hadn't really been doing. She thought that she had been and she's, mm-hmm. you know, Claude is a writer and she an aspiring writer and, and she had a teacher who told her, you know, we worry that you can't like put yourself fully on the page emotionally. Mm-hmm. And then this thing happens with her parents and she goes off to this island and it's there she truly learns to write. She not only learns to write the, the, like a novel that she wants to write, she learns to write her own story. And I think that just having her so isolated and she's not being able to like lean on her best friend or her other mm-hmm. friends and she's not in her comfort zone anymore. She's taken completely out of that and thrust into this whole new world. And I think that, you know, when you're in a situation like that, as again, so many of us have found ourselves this year, you start looking inward in a way that maybe you haven't. And I think being surrounded by nature for her really just reinforced that because she couldn't just get on her phone. She couldn't be on her screen the whole time. She was forced to like look around her. And it's interesting because I've been having some of that experience during quarantine too, just trying to break away from screens and trying not to get you know sucked in all the time. And because it's so easy to do with work and personal and everything. And then, and just like going outside for a minute or just, Mm -hmm. you know, stepping. And I, and I think so, I think for all those reasons, it was the perfect setting for Claude and it gave her what she needed. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the whole isolation thing is something that we kind of experience now in quarantine because we were just forced into this, this right. space and we, we exactly. were at, uh, not prepared at all for it. <laughs> and you'd think that uh, we would welcome the, the kind of disconnect, but actually, well, now we do, I think, at least personally, I do, because since we are all stuck at home, we're all just kind of glued to every screen that we see and (laughs) you know sometimes you can just imagine like living in an island with Claude and not having to deal with any of that (laughs) so true (laughs) I can't imagine (laughs) and there are definitely days that are harder than others when you're just like oh I just need to check this and I need to look at this and the news and we of course are dealing with an election that's coming up so we're always what is happening now and yeah Yeah. and next thing you know it's five hours later and you haven't moved (laughs) and it's like every time I go and it's like your screen time is up this week exactly (laughs) oh no (laughs) oh my gosh okay (laughs) so um another so many things about this book I feel like all my sentences start with another thing that I love thank you (laughs) I love how the supporting characters in the story are fleshed out um, in their own way. Um, I feel like even if we don't get a lot of screen time or page time for the characters, we still get to know them. And one of one character that I would love to get to know more is Jared, and not just because he's half Filipino. That was such a <laughs> breath of fresh air for me. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> and he was a genuinely nice person, and that's why I think I wanted to get to know him more. Um, I love that. And I will tell you yeah. that Jared is actually a real person. Really? So, yeah. So when I was staying at the end on the island, when I went mm-hmm. there to write the book, I had, there's this, um, there's this lovely, like we had a lovely dinner there and, um, there are very few guests and, and the wait staff is lovely. Everyone there is just amazing. And, um, Jared was waiting on my friend and me and mm-hmm. he, um, I had my phone case, which has all the bright places on it. Oh my god! And he looked at that and he said, "Oh my gosh, isn't that book amazing?" And I was like, <laughs> "Oh!" And my friend, my best friend Angelo, had yeah. met me there on the island, and he was like, "She wrote that book." And Jared oh was like, what? "He was like, that's my favorite book." And I wrote to you a couple years ago, and you wrote me back. Oh, that's so sweet! It was so sweet, and I just, I just absolutely like 
adore him and mm -hmm. we became such good friends. And I said, well, I want to put you in the story that I'm writing. Oh. And so I just, I wrote Jared as he is. He's a lovely person. He is half Filipino. Mm -hmm. He's the kindest, like sweetest guy. That's so yeah. nice. Does he know, <laughs> has he read the book? He has, he's reading it right now. Oh my gosh, Jared, I would love to meet you. I, I love your character it. in we'll the story. <laughs> that is so amazing. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to know which of the characters do you think you were most alike? And it doesn't have to be like, it could be any character, like a main character, a supporting character, the island, I don't know. <laughs> That's so, I love that question. I think I'm, I'm pro probably most like Claude, but I think mm -hmm. I'm also, it's interesting because I would have said, had I been, you know, any younger, I would have said like, oh, I'm definitely Claude, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Claude, but I'm also Lauren, her mother. I think oh, I'm I a combination of the two of them, mm -hmm. which is interesting to me because I think, I think Lauren reminds me so much of my mother who's no longer oh, here, but who was oh, just everything to me and thank you. And um, so I, I was some of the lovely traits from my mom I put in there and I'm like, oh, there are things that I try to emulate now too. So mm -hmm. that's, I think it's a combination of the two of them. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> um, I remember that some of the scenes that made me kind of tear up a bit is um, the scenes with Lauren. I don't know. It's the mother-daughter or parent-child relationships really get to me. I think family stories really get to me in that way. And that's why even if the love story of um, Maya and Claude is amazing, it's really the small, intimate family moments that really strike through. Good. Oh, thank you. I so <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> Um, there are many beautiful lines in the book, but one that really resonated with me is when Lauren says that the writing can save you. And we just wanted to know, like, have you ever had a moment like this? And what did you end up writing mm -hmm. as a result of that? Definitely. That's something my mother used to say. My mom was also oh. an author. And she said that on more than one occasion in her life when life would be kind of upside down, but she had whatever project she was working on, she was able to just throw herself into it. And I think, you know, the most recent example is during quarantine because oh. it's been such an unsettling, you know, scary time. And at first I really wasn't able to write very much and I didn't feel very creative. And then lately I'm just like writing I have so many different projects and I'm oh, working wow. on so many different things. And like yesterday, the world started feeling too much. I was like, mm -hmm. you know, paying too much attention to the election news and too much attention to the pandemic and all of the social unrest and civil unrest. And then I was like, okay, I need to write something because I need to just, that makes me feel like I have a say and I have a voice right. mm -hmm. when I feel powerless. So I really think that that's, that's the most recent time that that's happened, right. but it's definitely happened before in my life as well. Um, it really resonated with me because as a creative person myself, it's kind of, you kind of feel when, when your art or when you're writing is helping you more than you're trying to create it. And mm -hmm. it's a great thing. Um, sometimes it shows when like as a reader, it kind of shows sometimes in the right um, in the writing of others, and uh, mm -hmm. I think that's where you find the connection. You know, um, that's yeah, wonderful. So that's really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah. So, how is writing this story different from writing your previous novels? Uh, what was the easiest part to write, and what was the most challenging? Wow. I think that you know, it's interesting. Is I, this is my actually my 10th book it's my third oh, young wow. adult novel but it's my 10th book and every book that you write you think after you finish okay now I know how to write a book and then you go to the <laughs> next book and it wants to be written completely differently so it's it's interesting in that way but I would say that um you know 
this one, it was different in the writing because I went to this island and was actually there. I mean, so many of the times, like I wrote about the Arctic when I was in Los Angeles, mm. but I had to conjure the cold, you know, somehow. Right. And, but there I got to actually be in that setting at least for a little while. And that really helped. And then to meet my husband and have that wonderful, fateful, you know, meeting um, and then be able to put all of those adventures into the book. And I think for me, you know, the, the easiest ones to write were probably those adventures because they were something that I had shared with him and they were so vivid in my mind right. and I was falling in love. And I think the hardest for me was writing um, probably the scene where Claude's dad early on comes into her bedroom and tells her that her parents are splitting because it's very much like, at least I remember that happening with me and my parents. And it was still like very emotional all these years later to think about. It's interesting that both those seeds are um, kind of conjured from your memory and personal experiences and how they're the polar opposite of each other. Like yeah. <laughs> one is something that you would love to relive and the other is something that you kind of try to confront, but you know, there's a little apprehension there. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of difficult when you put yourself on the page. That's kind of the risk that you take, huh? It is, definitely. And every time I do it, I say, next time I'm going to write something that has nothing to do with me, <laughs> nothing I've ever gone through. And, right. and then I end up doing it again. Yeah. Is that possible though? I feel like with artists, there's always a little bit of you that goes to whatever you create, even if you try so hard not to do it. I believe that's true. I mean, even I started my career in nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And so even though I had nothing to do with these stories um, in terms of living them, I ended up, you know, I can see parts of myself and what I was going through in my life in those stories. So that's, it is, it's like you definitely put pieces of yourself in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So um, many references to other works are sprinkled throughout the book from Jean Severg to Ray Bradbury to songs like Joy to the World. Can you share with us some of the works that inspired or helped in the creation of Breathless? Absolutely. I mean, I think Judy Bloom's Forever was mm -hmm. probably the first thing that inspired it. I remember reading Forever, which was if if you haven't read it, for those who haven't read it, it's a very like frank talk about, I mean, it's a frank book about sex and, you know, losing your virginity the first time and everything. And um, I remember reading that when I was a teen and it was the one that we all hid under our beds and like, you know, we didn't want our moms to see. Although years later, my mom was like, I would have let you read that, which <laughs> kind of took some of the joy away from me, but. Oh. <laughs> But um, I think that definitely had an like an initial influence on me, and then um, and then it was you know it was things like the movie Breathless, which is in the book, but I don't name it. Um, there are parts of the story, but also the Jean Seberg, the look with the short hair, and Claude chops her hair off to look more like her, and um, joy to the world and Jeremiah's name being in there. Um, so, but I think that really in terms of things that inspired the story other than real life, I think for me, it was, it was that book. It was Judy Bloom, mm. And she had taught me since I was little, you know, with, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. And right. all of the wonderful books that you could write about real things that affect people and that they go through. And that's what I wanted to, to do early on. Yeah, that's, that's um, the power of children's stories, I think. It really yeah. sticks with you, no matter what age you are. So true. Yeah. And um, I wanted to say something about, what was it? Oh, the, the songs. I wanted to know if you listened to any songs while writing the story. I did. And I actually, what I do, and I started doing this with all the bright places is I create playlists for my oh. main characters. So Claude has a playlist, Maya has a playlist. And then I also mm -hmm. tend to storyboard my books as if I were writing a movie and I do it with music. Oh, okay. So I'll have like, this song is the scene and this song is the scene. And then, you know, and that way I can 
kind of drop into wherever I am in the book or whoever's voice I'm writing in and just kind of conjure the emotion that I need. So I actually did um, post Claude's uh, playlist on Spotify not too long ago, like via my Instagram. So that is up and I need to add everything to my website too. Like, so I have the right. playlist there. I think I have Bench and Violet and Jack and Libby up there, but I definitely like, and I, I used to not listen to music that had words while I was writing because mm-hmm. the words can distract you. Yeah. But lately I've just, I like doing it because I, I feel like it makes me think, it, it gets me out of my head in a way that I need to be. And it makes right. me feel more and think less and just write. Yeah. I'm definitely going to look for those playlists. I'm super interested <laughs> in Finch's actually. Finch's playlist oh, yes. <laughs> kind of like, be my thing. <laughs> I really, I loved it because I, um, Justice Smith, who played Finch in the movie, actually created a Finch playlist and started oh, running wow. while he was like working on the role. So right. he would like run every day and listen to Finch's playlist that he created. And mm-hmm. I always was like, I want to know what's on that playlist. And he didn't yeah. share it with any of us. And I was like, I'm dying to know what was on there, but it worked, whatever it was. Oh yeah, definitely. It really did. I wish you would share it though. I would love to know what's in that playlist. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) If he ever does, I will let you know. (laughs) Thank you. We will watch out for it. (laughs) Um, So on to kind of real life. How is Mm. it like releasing and promoting this book in the middle of pandemic? It's been very interesting. I mean, it's so different from releasing it not in a pandemic um you know the biggest difference obviously is like not getting to tour and not getting Mm -hmm. to see readers in person and that for me is the hardest because as my readers know i love them and i love having the interaction i love being able to meet them to hear their stories and to just give them a hug if i can you know i just i just that there's nothing that replaces that. I mean, I'm so grateful that we get to do things like this because hopefully it reaches even more readers, but I, I miss that. Um, so it's, it's strange, you know, it's, it's kind of like releasing it into a bubble cause you don't really, you kind of put it out there, but you, yeah. you're still in your house yeah. <laughs> and you're still in your, you know, stu- your studio and you're still like doing your daily routine. And it's, it's very strange. It really is. But I feel grateful to have it out there. I feel grateful mm-hmm. to be able to keep doing the work that I'm doing. And I feel grateful for my readers always. Right. That's great. That's great to hear. Um, we all make do, but I just, I love how we can still come out with beautiful things despite the state of the world that we're in. So we need them more, I think now more than ever. Exactly. (laughs) Um, So um, since the success of All the Bright Places on Netflix, are there any plans of adapting Breathless for the screen? Actually, so Breathless has been optioned for the screen. I can't say anything more than that i wish i could but i'm very excited so yes we're excited too and we can't wait for it okay (laughs) any so since it's been option um are you allowed to say like your dream cast or is that like a thing i can totally say my dream cast i mean who knows if it will ever come to be but okay so when (laughs) when i was writing claude i always pictured sophia lillis who was she's in the netflix show i am not okay with this she has oh, really okay. short red hair and a lot of freckles. Mm-hmm. She was in It as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and she played Nancy Drew recently too. Oh, but, wow. <laughs> but she's amazing. And she's just, um, there's something so striking about her. And she's so talented. And she's got a lot of like fire and spirit that I picture for Claude. Um, and then for Jeremiah, I picture um, Rudy Pankow, who's in, mm-hmm. he plays... JJ in the Outer Banks on Netflix. Um, he's and then also I have my friend Luke Eisner is such a lovely guy and he's he's in the movie Tall Girl also on Netflix oh. and he is he plays like the really cute like foreign exchange student oh. um, but he's very funny and he's a really good actor so I kind of picture like one of them. 
Right. Um, for Maya. So that's my dream cast, just putting it out there into the yeah. world. <laughs> yeah, just manifest it. You never know. It could happen. <laughs> exactly. And I think Jared has to play himself, though. Oh, my gosh. That would be amazing. Yes. yes. <laughs> we'll definitely run that petition when a time comes. Definitely. Jared for Jared. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you've been working a lot during the quarantine. Is there anything down the pipeline that we can look forward to? Yes. Yeah, so it's, and it'll sound kind of like a tease because there's not a lot I can say about anything oh. I'm doing, but I can tell you, I just finished a collaboration with another YA author, which we okay. just got notes for yesterday. So I'm very excited. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be out next year. We'll see. Um, and then I'm working on the screenplay for Holding Up the Universe, which has also been an option oh. for a film. I'm really excited about that. And I'm starting to work on my next solo YA novel. Oh, wow. so many things to look forward to. So many stories. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and um, I guess lastly, to close off this part of the conversation, what advice would you have for young writers out there like Claude, especially at a time like this when, as you said, we're all kind of dealing with a collective, you know, before, after floor disappearing from under us? kind of mm -hmm. situation? I would say, um, I always quote my mom because she gave me the best writing advice and life advice, but she always said, you know, just believe in yourself and your work. Um, don't ever tell yourself no, because there are enough people in the world who will do that for you. Um, I think always write the story that you want to read because I feel that keeps me invested when I write, you know, I end up writing the books that I really want to read. Right. And also just don't, don't be afraid to write something that isn't perfect because there isn't any such thing. And don't ever compare yourself to a published book because that book has been through edit after edit after edit. <laughs> and you just need to get out the words on the page. You can go back and you can edit and edit and edit. But let yourself just be free to write. And also something my mom used to say was, you are the only you there is in the entire world, which means that only you can write the story you can write. And I think that's amazing. So that's I really wonderful. try to encourage young writers to just, you know, whatever the story is they're burning to tell, tell it because no one else can tell it the way you would. That's so beautiful. Thank you for that. I mean, oh, that you. really resonates. So thank you. <laughs> okay, so that caps off our kind of main conversation. Now we'll move on to our fast talk segment, where mm. I'll be asking you kind of lightning questions and you just have to answer the first thing that pops in your head. So okay. you could <laughs> explain some a little bit. But yeah, just really the first thing that pops in your head. Okay, so are you okay. ready? Yes. All right. So let's go. Favorite <laughs> author. Uh, Shirley Jackson. Ooh. Favorite place to write? My studio, my writing studio. Okay. Favorite fiction tropes? Oh, I love star-crossed lovers. Oh, that's so and cute. Okay. Happy, sad endings. <laughs> oh, oh, I love those too. Um, yes. Favorite thing to use as a bookmark? Uh, I love to use cards that either my mom has written me or my husband has written me or my kids. Awesome. <laughs> um, favorite thing about being an author? My readers. Oh. Absolutely. What are you reading right now? I am reading um, Nothing to See Here. And uh, it's been, I can't remember his last name, but it's amazing. <laughs> it's so amazing. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, what is the last book that made you cry? Oh my goodness. East Coast Girls by Carrie Clutter. She's not only one of my closest friends, she's such a brilliant writer. And that book made me sob. Oh my God. In such a good way, in a really good right. way. It was, yeah, I cried. I will look that up. <laughs> what is the one book that you always recommend? Oh my gosh. I always recommend, well, I always recommend We Were Liars by E. Ooh. Lockhart. I love that yeah. book. Love it. And I also recommend Speak by Lori Hall Sanderson. I just oh. think they're two of they're two of my favorite young adult books. Mm -hmm. And Forever by Judy Bloom. Of course. Um, <laughs> paperback or hardcover? 
I love the look of hardcover, but if I'm reading, I like paperback better. Right. Same. Bookmarks or dog ears? Bookmarks. I don't like dog ears. I'm like, no, keep it pretty. (laughs) Although I will like, you know, occasionally mark it up like that. Right. (laughs) Um, Read all day or write all day? Can I do both? Like I would both would be, I would love to read one day and then the next day write all day. But if I have to pick one, I'm probably going to pick write all day. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Write in a journal or type in a computer? Type in a computer. Yeah. Um, Do you write on your books? Uh, I do actually. After I said that about the dog ear, I do actually write on my books. (laughs) I underline, I write in the margins, I make notes, yeah. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> it does, it does, it really does. And lastly, do you judge books by their covers? I do. I mean, <laughs> I hate to say it. I mean, and I certainly have some books that I love that I don't love the cover, but <laughs> I see beautiful covers or interesting covers or unique covers, and I'm like, ooh, you know, yeah. and then I have to, like, buy it. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> We love that question. And I think out of everyone that we've asked, they always say that they do. It's something that we all do. So it's okay. (laughs) Okay, good. That makes me feel better. (laughs) All right. I think that's it. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, Thank you. This is amazing. Do you have a message for everyone who's joined us today? Absolutely. Just thank you with all my heart for all your love and support for being my brightest places. And I hope that one day, not too long from now, I could come and see you in person. And until then, I'm sending you all the love in the world and a big virtual hug. Oh, thank you so much. And we would always welcome you here. Um, oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah. It's one of my favorite <laughs> places on earth. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as mm-hmm. I did. I loved and it. Thank you. And thank you very much to everyone who has joined us today. You can get your copies of Breathless at fullybookedonline.com. We have an exclusive promo just for today. So if you purchase any of Jennifer Niven's books um, for today, October 24th, you could get them at 15% off. Plus, you get a chance to be one of the three lucky bookworms to join an intimate virtual meet and greet with Jennifer herself. Yay. So thank you, thank and you. I hope you read something great today. Thank you.